Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. It is Sunday. Good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. I'm going to get my coffee here, and I just wanted to welcome you all. So today is um, the 12th of April and it's 2020. It's really a different Easter. We're all staying in place. We're all at home. We're not out getting our finest dresses on and heading to church and worshiping with our friends and loved ones. We're here <laughs> with the puppies and yeah it's just a different different day but you know um i just wanted to i i woke up with a song by don francisco that was popular 20 something years ago um, called he's alive <laughs> it was just rang, ringing through my ears he's alive he's alive He's alive and unforgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. Remember that song? It's just been, I've been just, it's just been going. I finally had to put it on YouTube and listen to it. And I burst into tears. Oh my goodness. I just sobbed at the very end of the song. It's just something I'd highly recommend if you'd like to listen to a song that's really good storytelling of the event of uh, the cross and the resurrection. I love it. Thank God for beautiful songs that we have over the decades, the centuries to sing, to worship him. So this is the Passion Translation. Uh, when you buy the whole or purchase the whole thing, it comes in a bound. This is not, um, is this leather? <laughs> I don't even know if this is leather. No, this is faux leather. <laughs> but this is how you can purchase it if you want to get the whole thing, the New Testament. And then it also has the Psalms, the Proverbs, and Song of Solomon in it. And then you can um, also um, get the other book of Isaiah or the book of Genesis that w is the latest in the translation. I wish I knew what the next book is that's going to come out. Um, just I'm not sure what he's working on now. Anyway, we were to be in Genesis 4 today, but I really felt like I just couldn't read about Cain and Abel on Easter Sunday. So I hope that you will join me now in the reading of chapter 24 in the book of Luke because I just felt like I needed to read about the resurrection. I didn't really want to read about Cain murdering this morning. <laughs> if that's okay. We can do that tomorrow. Um, so yeah, let's um, hold on just a second. Let me just check something. Let's read from Luke 24. I think that will be much more um, timely for the day. And yeah, so this is the resurrection of Jesus. Very early that Sunday morning, the women made their way to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Joanna, and Mary, Jesus' mother. Arriving at the tomb, they discovered that the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled aside, so they went in to look. But the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was gone. They stood there stunned and perplexed. Suddenly, Two men in dazzling white robes, shining like lightning, appeared above them. Terrified, 
the women fell to the ground on their faces. The men in white said to them, Why would you look for the living one in the tomb? He's not here, for he has risen. Have you forgotten what he said to you while he was still in Galilee? The Son of Man is destined to be handed over to sinful men to be nailed to a cross, and on the third day he will rise again. Okay, one moment, let me just turn the page here. All at once they remembered his words. Leaving the tomb, they went to break the news to the eleven and to all the others of what they had seen and heard. When the disciples heard the testimony of the women, it made no sense, and they were unable to believe what they heard. But Peter jumped up and ran the entire distance to the tomb to see for himself. Stooping down, he looked inside and discovered it was empty. There was only the linen sheet lying there. Staggered by this, he walked away wondering what did it mean? Later that Sunday, two of Jesus' disciples were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a journey of about 17 miles. <clears throat> they were in the midst of a discussion about, about all the events of the last few days when Jesus walked up and accompanied them in their journey. They were unaware that it was Jesus walking alongside them, <clears throat> for God prevented them from recognizing him. Jesus said to them, you seem to be in a deep discussion about something. What are you talking about so sad and gloomy? They stopped and the other one named Cleopas answered, haven't you heard? Are you the only one in Jerusalem unaware of the things that have happened over the last few days? Jesus asked, what things? The things about Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they replied. He was a mighty prophet of God who performed miracles and wonders. His words were powerful and he had great favor with God and the people. For three days, but three days ago, the high priest and the rulers of the people sentenced him to death and had him crucified. We all hoped that he was the one who would redeem and rescue Israel. Early this morning, some of the women informed us of something amazing. They said that he went, they went to the tomb and they found it empty. They claimed two angels appeared and told them that Jesus is now alive. Some of us went to see for ourselves and found the tomb exactly like the woman said, but no one has seen him. Jesus said to them, why are you so thick headed? Why do you find it so hard to believe every word the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for Christ, the Messiah, to experience all these sufferings and then afterward to enter into his glory? Then he carefully unveiled to them the revelation of himself throughout the scripture. He started from the beginning and explained the writings of Moses and all the prophets, showing how they wrote of him and revealed the truth about himself. As they approached the village, Jesus walked on ahead, telling them he was going to a distant place. They urged him to remain there and pleaded, stay with us, it will be dark soon. So Jesus went with them into the village. Joining them at the table for supper, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. All at once, their eyes were opened and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly in a flash, poof, Jesus vanished from before their eyes. Wow. Stunned, they looked at each other and said, why didn't we recognize it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. Then, then they left at once and hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. When they found the eleven and the other disciples all together, 
they overheard them saying, It's really true. The Lord, he's risen from the dead. He even appeared to Peter. Then the two disciples told the others what had happened to them on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had unveiled himself as he broke bread with them. While they were still discussing all of this, Jesus suddenly manifested right in front of their eyes. Startled and terrified, the disciples were convinced that they were seeing a ghost. Standing there among them, he said, be at peace. Be at peace. I am the living God. Be at peace. I am the living God. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Why would you be so frightened? Do not let doubt or fear enter your hearts, for I am. All in caps, I am. Come, gaze upon my pierced feet and hands. See for yourself. It's I, it is I standing here alive. Touch me and know that my wounds are real. See that I have a body of flesh and bone. He showed them his pierced hands and feet and let them touch his wounds. The disciples were ecstatic yet dumbfounded, unable to fully comprehend it, knowing that they were still wondering if he was real. <laughs> Jesus said, here, let me show you. Give me something to eat. They handed him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and they watched him eat it. Then he said to them, don't you remember the words that I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you that everything written about me would be fulfilled including all the prophecies from the law of Moses through the Psalms and the writings. Let me turn the page here. And the writings of the prophets, that they would all find their fulfillment. They all find their fulfillment in this day, in this event, and in Jesus. He supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scriptures. Then said to them, everything that has happened fulfills what was prophesied of me. Christ, the Messiah, was destined to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Now you must go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sin so that they will turn to me. Start right here in Jerusalem, for you are my witnesses and have seen for yourselves all that has transpired. And I will send the fulfillment of the Father's promise to you. So stay here in the city until the mighty power of heaven falls upon you and wraps around you. Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany he lifted his hands over them and blessed them in his love while he was still speaking out words of love and blessing he floated off the ground into the sky ascending into heaven before their very eyes and all they could do was worship him all they could do was worship him. Overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy, they made their way back to Jerusalem. Every day they went to the temple praising and worshiping God. That's the end of the book of Luke and the telling of uh, Jesus' resurrection from Luke's perspective. And um, I just wanted to read to you how beautiful, how marvelous it is to recount 
the fulfillment of all scriptures and all prophecies culminating in this event and in this day as Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Yesterday we said that it was the day that Jesus kicked the devil's butt. And, you know, it really was. It was the day that he went into hell and got the keys to hell and to death. And he had to fight for them. He had to go to war for them. And he brought back the spoils. He brought back everything that you and I will ever need for life and godliness. He brought back eternity. He brought back the pr promises fulfilled. He brought back every word to be true now. And um, we owe him so much. We owe him our lives because he has rescued us from death. He has rescued us from uh, dire, <laughs> a dire place that we would have found ourselves in. Have you any, any, any idea what it would be like to be separated from him for eternity? It is absolutely overwhelming and absolutely the greatest gift that we could ever receive in this life is to know him to know the resurrection power of Jesus that brought him back from the grave and is offered to us today if you are somehow seeing this um, you know devotional time with me maybe a friend has shown it to you or someone that you know has forwarded it to you have you any idea how much you are loved? Do you understand? I would just ask you today, do you understand what great love has been poured out on your behalf? And this is the day that you can rejoice with everyone who has declared and decided to make Jesus their savior. This is the day that you can come into a place of relationship with him. This is the day. This is the day that you can decide that you are going to leave everything about your old life and come into a new place and a new life with him as he's offering you um, new life. He's offering you life itself he's offering you abundant life and he's offering you eternal life and i just i implore i just ask of you to consider today making this the day that you uh, allow jesus to become the first and the foremost person in your life that everyone else would have to take second place to him and that he could become your all in all that he could become the one that will empower you and strengthen you and heal you and embrace you and walk with you it's jesus he is the answer if you have questions I'm hoping people will share this. I'm hoping this can be somehow uh, a lifeline to you today. And I'm, if you have questions about how you can leave everything behind and come and follow Jesus today, let me know. Let someone who shared this with you know, because this is the day of salvation. This is Easter. This is the day that Jesus made good on all of the promises in Scripture, fulfilled his word. You know, when he ascended into heaven and he said, wait here, tarry here for the promise of the power from heaven. That's the book of Acts that comes after the book of John that describes 
Pentecost and when the Holy Spirit fell upon all of the believers there. And you know, that is what we need. That is who you need. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. And maybe you already know Jesus. Maybe you're already um, one of his followers. Maybe today's the day that you need the power, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit to come upon you. I also just want to offer that to you today, that the power of the Holy Spirit is available to you. And you can ask him to come on you with the power that he has for you and the gifts and the anointing that he has for you to walk in the earth during these days. He has so much for you. Gladly will he give it to you. Again, if you want to talk or if you have questions and you want to private message me or yeah, if you have someone that's given you this video as a gift today for Easter, we, we love you. We want you to reach out to us. It's not a, gonna be a problem. We would love to talk to you. I would love to talk to you. So God bless you today on this Easter Sunday. He's alive. And so are we. We are alive in Christ. And one day we will be in our heavenly abode. We're going to be in a place that was designed specifically and perfectly for us individually to worship him forever. And I want you to come. I want you to be there with us. So um, God bless you. God bless you and give you a beautiful and happy Easter in Jesus' name. All right. Have a good day. Contact whoever gave you this video. <laughs> they love you. Bye-bye.